welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So, we will continue from the previous uh, lecture. In the previous lecture, we have started with the power series method. So, we will now continue with that method. So, in the previous one, we have we have discussed power method to find dominant eigen value and then eigen vector. Now, it was the iterative method. So, from the convergence rate So, the rate of convergence basically depends upon the proportion So, that is lambda i is by the lambda 1 because lambda 1 is the dominant value and this lambda i is are all the other values. So, it depends upon what is the lambda i is by lambda 1 because if this value is smaller then the factor the power k will be much smaller. So, then it will converge to 0 faster. So, smaller the smaller the proportion lambda i by lambda 1 implies faster the rate of convergence. Otherwise, it is a rate of convergence is linear. So, power method is a has a uh, rate of convergence that is linear. So, this is the way we are able to find that the dominant eigen value. Now, I will find out inverse power method. So, what is the inverse power method? Now, we know that that if a x is equal to lambda x, where x is not equal to 0. So, lambda is the eigen value of this. Then from here, then assuming that A is non-singular, which implies I can pre-multiply by A inverse. So, I will get this value, lambda A inverse x and this will be identity matrix from here I can write lambda A inverse x and this can be written as A inverse x is 1 over lambda x this one. So, now from here I can see that if lambda is the eigen value of matrix A then 1 over lambda is the eigen value of the matrix A inverse with the same so eigen value of A inverse and this is the same same eigen vector. So, the same eigen vector whatever the I have started with this one 1 over lambda will be the eigen value corresponding to A inverse. So, this is the same eigen vector we are choosing. Now, you know that from the power method. So, we know that using power method we 
we are able to, to find dominant eigenvalue and eigenvector then if lambda is the dominant eigenvalue then which implies 1 over lambda will be so lambda is the dominant eigenvalue so this is the minimum eigenvalue so i can say that this is the least eigenvalue in magnitude so i am talking about the magnitude now now suppose if lambda is the smallest or the least is the least eigen value of matrix a and that is n cross n that is i write a x is equal to lambda x so this is the now i am considering that this is the least eigen value least or the minimum eigen value in magnitude of course everything is in terms of magnitude then a inverse x will have 1 over lambda x which implies that 1 over lambda is the dominant eigen value of the matrix a inverse. So now from here I can say that now so what is the inverse power method? So inverse power method is that that for any matrix so this is for any matrix A that is n cross n such that A x is equal to lambda x where lambda is the, is the least eigen value in magnitude the least eigen value of matrix A then applying power method to A inverse is called inverse power method. Because we know that A inverse x will be 1 over lambda x. So then it will be the dominant eigenvalue and I can apply the power method to A inverse to find this value. So from we are able to find 1 over lambda then using this I can find this lambda that was the least eigenvalue. So now from here I can say that using power method and inverse power method. we are able to find to find dominant eigen value and least eigen values and least eigen values. So now we are able to find at least two eigen value that is the dominant eigen value and the least eigen value and the, the corresponding x will be same in both the cases. Now suppose 
I have a matrix A n cross n and suppose its eigenvalue is given like this one. This is the range of the eigenvalues. Suppose I have, so let us say uh, uh, that we have a eigenvalues. So, this is suppose lambda 1, this is lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, <coughs> maybe I can choose this one. lambda k, lambda k plus 1 to lambda n. So, suppose I have these eigenvalues. Now, I am able to find using the help of power method, I am able to find the least values and the highest value. So, this is my least and this is the dominant. So, I am able to find this and this. Now, what will happen if I want to find in between? Suppose I want to find this value, this value, I want to find this value, this value. So, I cannot use my power method or the inverse power method to find the values, eigenvalues in between the maximum and the minimum. So, now what I can do with this one? So, for this one, there is a another method, very important method, and that is called the shifted inverse power method. shifted inverse power method. So, in this case what we will do? Suppose I take a alpha, so I let us I choose one alpha here, this value and that is alpha. Now, what I do? I try to find the Eigen value close to alpha. Okay. So, let us write this one. <coughs> Assume that, that the matrix A n cross n has distinct Eigen values. So, that is I call it lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n. So, let me consider let us consider my lambda k. So, this one I want to find. Then a constant then the constant alpha can be chosen so that so, let us assume that now I can assume that that this is my lambda 1, this is my lambda 2 and up to here lambda n. So, it is suppose I taking the axis now. So, it is suppose x axis and y axis. So, this quantity is the largest one. So, this is the largest one dominant and this is the minimum. Now, from here then we consider alpha be chosen so that now we have chosen alpha close enough to lambda k which is we want to find. So, this one we want to find. Then a constant alpha is chosen such that I take 1 over lambda k minus alpha okay, and that I call it mu 1. So, let us call it mu 1. So, let us take this as a mu 1. Then what will happen that then so that this is the dominant eigenvalue of A minus alpha i inverse using power method and 
then and then lambda k can be written as so what I will get the lambda k so I can take this one so it will be 1 over mu 1 plus alpha so this will be my lambda k so I can find the lambda k from here right so that is the we are able to find my lambda k so that is a shifted inverse power method so what we are doing basically we are choosing suppose this is the place I am my lambda k is falling at this place now what I do I choose a number alpha close to lambda k and then I will finding the value a minus alpha i inverse and using this one I will finding the power method so power method will give the dominant eigenvalue of this with the help of this and I am able to find the lambda k so that is called the shifted inverse power method okay so so what I am doing here is that so this is the explanation so proof is there I know that we know that if lambda is a is an eigenvalue of matrix A then I can write as a x is equal to lambda x where x is the corresponding eigenvector and x is not equal to 0. Now, I also know that what about a minus alpha i x this one I want to find. So, this will be again a x minus alpha i x and from here this will be equal to a x minus alpha x and I also know that i x is equal to x and alpha i x is equal to alpha x. So, the matrix any matrix alpha i the constant matrix has the eigenvalue alpha. So, from here I can cite that this one I can write as a x is equal to lambda x and minus alpha uh, alpha x is equal to alpha x. So, from here I can write that alpha minus uh, lambda, lambda minus alpha x. So, this can be written like this one okay, because this should be a matrix. So, I should put always i here and then from here I can choose this i here and then lambda minus alpha so x I can now take from here. So, from here I can say that lambda minus alpha is an eigenvalue of a minus alpha i. So, this is the eigenvalue we are getting. So, now there is no need to write i here because this is already a a x is a vector. So, alpha x and this I can write no problem alpha x. Now, from a lambda minus alpha and x. So, this is the eigenvalue of the matrix this. Now, from here I know that what about a minus then a minus alpha i inverse and from the previous knowledge we know that a minus alpha i inverse. So, this one can be written as this from here x will be equal to 1 over lambda minus alpha x. So, that will be there. So, from here I can say that 1 over lambda minus alpha is an eigenvalue of a minus alpha i inverse. So, that is the eigenvalue. Now, what will happen? Now, I want to apply the power method to this one, this matrix. 
Now, we want to apply power method. to a minus alpha i a inverse. Now, the question is that I know that the power methods that gives me the dominant eigenvalue. So, it is going to give the dominant eigenvalue. Now, how we can say that this is the dominant eigenvalue? So, that is the question. So, in this case we want that now, if alpha is close to lambda, okay, we are taking this as a real, real valued Eigen values. So, if alpha is close to lambda, then 1 over lambda minus alpha is very large. In fact, if I want to plot a graph for this one. So, suppose this is my alpha. So, this is the value of and this is the suppose I take the I just take the magnitude. Now, if you see that this this value is going to be like this one and this value is going the figure of this is going to because at 1 over alpha this is going to be infinity otherwise the value is this one. So, this is the value of lambdas or 1 over these values. So, when the alpha is so when the lambda is close to alpha then this is going to be a value infinity because when lambda is equal to infinity and in that case otherwise if it is going to be away from this one then this factor this value will be less. So, in that case we can see that this is the graph we can say then using this one. So, which implies that if we choose alpha close enough to the uh, to the required eigenvalue to the required eigenvalue that is suppose in this case it is uh, what we have taken the lambda k. So, this is the lambda k I have chosen then 1 over lambda k minus alpha is will be the dominant eigenvalue. So, that will be the domain diagonal value. So, with the help of using power method, using power method to A minus alpha i inverse, we are able to find 1 over lambda minus alpha. So, that is the lambda k I am taking. So, suppose this is equal to I can call it the what we called it that is we are calling it mu 1. So, that is equal to the mu 1. So, this is the eigenvalue of this. So, from here I know that using from there I will get 1 over mu 1 will be lambda k minus alpha and from here my lambda k will be 1 over mu 1 plus alpha. So, now I am able to find the lambda k where lambda k is the eigenvalue of the matrix A in between. So, it may be in between any values. So, in fact, now I can apply this to any value it may be a least value or the maximum value also does not matter. So, in this case I can apply this method to find any value of the any Eigen value. So, that is the 
So, this is the way we can define this one and we can find the eigenvalue. So, using this one, using, using this method that is called the shifted inverse method. So, using shifted inverse method, we are able to find all the eigenvalues of the matrix of a matrix that is A and cross A. So, not only we are able to find the least value or the, la, the dominant eigenvalue, but with the help of shifted inverse method, we are able to find any eigenvalue. So, you choose the alpha that is close to any eigenvalue and with the help of this shifted inverse method, we will find that eigenvalue. So, that uh, we will see that how we can use these methods to find the eigenvalues and in the next lecture or maybe after that, we will be able to write the MATLAB code and then we will do that, that how using the MATLAB code, we, uh, we should be able to find the eigenvalues of a any n cross n matrix. So, I think now we should stop here. So, today we have discussed uh, continue with the power method and then we have discussed the inverse power method and the last one is the shifted inverse power method. So, using the shifted inverse power method, we are able to find all the eigenvalues of the given matrix. So, in the next lecture, we will continue with this one and we will discuss other topics. So, thanks for watching this uh, lecture. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you.